I know you have heard me say this before and it was not true, but I will never, never do drugs again. I even quit smoking. Those words are from a letter my dad wrote to me while he was doing time in the Colorado Department of Corrections in 1995. I was seven and I was already very familiar with drugs, alcohol, the visiting protocols at the state penitentiary, and so much more than a seven-year-old should know about. You see, my dad had a twin brother who died just before I turned three. My uncle's death impacted my father so much that he lost touch with reality. He chose to turn to drugs to help him cope with the pain. Ultimately, he chose to spend most of his life in and out of prison because of the choices he made. In fact, I think I refer to him more as inmate 93092 than I did his dad. In a Bible study about the armor of God written by Priscilla Shire, she says, every human being on the planet longs to be nurtured and filled with something, with someone. But sadly, many people waste years and years of their lives seeking this fulfillment in relationships, substances, or ambitions, only to still be left feeling meaningless in the end. This was my father's story. He was left feeling so meaningless that he decided to take his own life in 2016. Sadly, I don't know if my dad ever accepted Jesus as his savior. However, he knew enough about life to tell me in another one of his letters. Being a part of youth group will give you another perspective of how people live. He was right. Youth group did provide me with another perspective of how people live. But he did not tell me that youth group has the potential for radical life change. Going to youth group, I underestimated the skills and tools I could acquire if I believed in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, accepted counsel from my leaders, and applied the truth of God's work in my life. It was there that I learned that I have a heavenly Father who will never break his pinky promises. It was there I acquired my first piece of armor to fight the ongoing struggles I was about to experience during my adolescent years. Youth group gave me the helmet of salvation which offered protections I didn't even know were possible. I remember that being a teenager was so hard. I was coming out of childhood, trying to learn how to be an adult, yet there was this invisible war waging around me. Satan's army was doing everything possible to keep me from using the salvation I received to also apply it to my life by actively participating in the process of sanctification. I knew I did not want to follow in my father's footsteps. I knew I wanted to break the vicious cycle I felt stuck in but I did not know how to get out of it. It was kind of like playing with those Chinese finger traps. The harder I pulled away, the more of a grip it had on me. When I was in seventh grade, I did not like to be home. I wanted to be with my friends. So I spent a lot of time four blocks down the street at my best friend's house. One evening, I was walking home from her house by myself when a man wearing a white ski mask stopped me in the middle of the road and he said, hi, little girl, what's your name? How old are you? And then he picked me up by my arms and tried to put me in a white car with three other men in it. By God's grace, he dropped me in the grass. I ran home and told my mom what happened. We called the police and went through the reporting process. The police told me I was lucky because the odds were not in my favor. I should not have been able to get away from that. Yet here I am. And the only explanation I have to offer is that God created the circumstances which caused him to let me go. He saved me, again. After that, my best friend started rumors that I made it up to get attention. That hurt really bad. That situation was the first tug in that Chinese finger trap. It was the beginning of a really difficult time in my life that left me feeling stuck. It led to hurting my mom by choosing to live with my dad and some other relatives while he was on house arrest. That led to the exposure of other types of abuse that had occurred, which led to my dad relapsing, going back to prison, and another move for me. Then came the house parties filled with sex, drugs, alcohol, and people who were stealing things like cars, which resulted in the dependence of broken relationships. I had let Satan's army pick me apart and I had forgotten to use those skills and tools youth group had exposed me to. I had forgotten to put on the full armor of God. Thankfully, I had one tool inside of me because I had chosen to accept Jesus as my savior. I had the Holy Spirit. When I was at those house parties, the Holy Spirit was stirring up my thoughts and feelings, telling me not to participate. Little by little, I chose to cooperate. Instead of drinking and doing drugs, I was the one taking care of the people who were, encouraging them to do something different. 
And when others asked me why I was caring for people instead of participating, I would say, I don't know, it just feels right. And at the time, I was not able to articulate that it was God working in me to restore, protect, and shield me from the daily attacks of the enemy. So that leaves us with the big question. How do we get out of that silly Chinese finger trap anyway? How did I end up here, working at a church instead of addicted to drugs and in jail? Well, just like the novelty toy, the answer is counterintuitive. You need to lean in and use outside supports and back yourself out. More specifically, first, lean into what God has done for us and accept the free gift of salvation. It is a powerful gift that should never be underestimated. Then use those outside supports that God gives us, like prayer, the Word of God, our pastors, and Christian counselors to hold ourselves accountable. Finally, take a step back and realize that the enemy may be invisible, but he is not fictional. He is very real and very persistent, waging war against us constantly. With that in mind, let us take an offensive stance against the enemy right now by pulling out the sword of the Spirit, otherwise known as our Bibles or our phone, and taking in this message of Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Before I say goodbye, I just want to tell you that not all of my dad's letters were filled with heartbreak. Once he was reminiscing about some of the few good times we had together, and he shared that I asked him if God had a vacuum. In all honesty, I do not remember how or if he responded at all. But years later, I found my answer in Priscilla Shire's Bible study on the armor of God. Today, I can confidently say that God has many vacuums and he places each one in our hearts hoping we choose Him instead of turning to relationships, substances, or ambitions for that fulfillment. That space you are looking to fill can only truly be occupied by Him. Therefore, I hope that each one of you will walk away knowing how to apply the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit in your life with the assurance of God's Word and the clear gospel, knowing that you are not only saved for eternity, but you are saved so that you can live a full and amazing life that is honoring and pleasing to God.